Welcome to the 2011 Local Hero Awards in celebration of Black History Month, presented by Union Bank and KQED. Good evening. I'm John Bolin, president of KQED, and on behalf of KQED and our partners at Union Bank, I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's celebration for 2011 of Black History Month. This is our 16th year partnering with Union Bank on this event, and we've honored more than 100 often unsung heroes in our community. Tonight, we're going to be honoring four individuals for outstanding contributions to the community. And to get things started, I'm going to introduce Julius Robinson, Executive Vice President and Head of Corporate Social Responsibility for Union Bank. Please welcome Julius Robinson. Union Bank, as John has said, is a proud partner with KQED uh, for the special award and our commitment to celebrate the contributions of local African Americans and Asians uh, Americans has remained strong since the inception of this program in San Francisco. The collective experience, perspective, and the people all make a difference. We know that uh, our continued success as a company is uh, directly related to our investments in the communities where we operate. And in 2011, we will continue to play an integral part in those communities. The contributions of tonight's honorees are important to our communities, and they play an essential role in impacting our state, the county, and the world. So to the awardees, let me thank you again for your commitment and all of the work that you do. It is uh, my distinct pleasure uh, tonight to be uh, here to honor one of our first honorees, Dr. Claiborne Carson is a unique fellow. He uh, is director, uh, founding director of the Martin Luther King Jr. Research and Education Institute at Stanford University. Dr. Car Carson has devoted his life to the study of Dr. Martin Luther King and the moments he inspired. I'm really pleased to have the honor to, to introduce you, Dr. Carson. Hello, I'm Pierre Habis of Union Bank. Diversity is one of Union Bank's most closely held values. This is why we are proud to honor local heroes in celebration of Black History Month. Now, let's meet one of our honorees. I'm Claiborne Carson, professor of history here at Stanford and also founding director of the Martin Luther King Research and Education Institute. Our mission has been to disseminate the ideas of, of Martin Luther King to keep his legacy alive for future generations. Being at the March on Washington as a 19-year-old, uh, this was the great adventure of my early life. I think what King represents is, is the greatest freedom movement the world has ever seen. King understood that it wasn't just African Americans trying to achieve civil rights reform, but rather it was people around the world, in India and China and Africa and so many other places, trying to achieve basic citizenship rights. The message is definitely universal, and in, and in fact, I think only when you understand its universal significance do you really understand who King was. First of all, one of the things I know about King is that he symbolized something so much larger than one person. And that's the way I feel about getting this award, is that uh, I, I don't do the work of the Martin Luther King Institute. The people who work with me every day, and um, for them, every day is Martin Luther King holiday, <laughs> except they don't get a holiday off <laughs> to do it. So I'd like to first start by just asking all of those associated with the, the King Institute to, to stand. Um, I'd like to particularly recognize uh, Marsha Clark with the Dalai Lama Front Foundation and Regina Covington who were responsible for nominating me so that was very important particularly thanks and my wife Susan uh, who worked with the King Institute for almost 20 years and uh, before she retired and went on to better things so <laughs> thank you so much thanks um, what I would say about um, the King Institute, I, and I've been told to stick to two minutes, so 
very quickly. I believe that here in Silicon Valley, where the greatest communication revolution that the world has ever seen happened and where all of these resources are within 50 miles of where we, we are, we should put that together with the greatest message in human history, and that's the message of nonviolent social transformation. And if I have any message to deliver to all of you is that how many people know that right here in the Bay Area is the largest collection of materials about Martin Luther King anywhere in the world? Not Atlanta, not any place else, right here. And what we need to do is to get that message to all parts of the world so that uh, the, the things that are going on as we speak in Cairo and so many other places, that we need to get that message in the hands of people who are frustrated and want to have a better life, want to build democracy. And uh, in this country, I think, in, in its essence, represented that message of revolutionary change to the world. And I think we need to get back to that message, and we can start that right in the Bay Area. So that's the message I want to deliver. KQD is proud of our commitment to diversity. And as I look at this time of the year and experience this time of year, I keep three things in mind. Gratitude is the first for the sacrifices of all those people that have gone before us. The second is joy, that we celebrate the accomplishments of our heroes and the accomplishments of our ordinary citizens. And the last is commitment to purposeful action, because there is much work still to do. On behalf of the board, community advisory panel, and the staff, I'd like to congratulate all of our honorees. Our next honoree is Na Dadura Green, Diane Green, a community leader, mentor, educator, and artist who has been committed to supporting the success of our youth. She is the founder of, and director of From Heart to Hand, an organization helping our young adults in education and life skills training. So please join me in watching a video profile of her. My name is Na Dudua, Diane Green. I'm an educator, founder, director of From Heart to Hand. Our mission is to help the communities here and abroad to change that consciousness of poverty to self-sufficiency. We're, we're trying to teach young people how to be adults that stand in integrity to help them have tools to use to be responsible adults. Upon completion of six to nine month training program, the students have an opportunity to travel to Egypt and Ghana. The entire village came out for us. My dad, who is now 101 years of age, he taught me that unconditional love. From learning that lesson, I'm able to reach out to young people and deal with them where they are and who they are without judgment. Good evening. In the name of God, the beneficent, the merciful, to whom all praises are due, I would like to thank my ancestors, for they are the shoulders from upon which I stand. I would like to thank my biological parents, John and Maddie Beal, for their procreation, and my mother, for being the vessel to transition me into this world as she gave her life for my existence and died when I was nine days old. I'd like to thank my mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Green, for saying yes to the call and being my angels as they took me and my siblings into their home when I was 13 days old and gave me unconditional love, support, and courage to stand. I thank my dad who continues to raise me as the only mother I knew, made her transition when I was 13 years old, and he, at 101 years of age, as you saw up there, and he's, he's back there, is my unsung hero. My daughter, Johanna, who gave me courage 
to start my first dance company and travel as she wanted to see the world. My grands, Jahari, little Jahari and Jatsi, my board members who are always there for me and continue to see the vision of From Heart to Hand. The Wose community in Oakland for allowing us to be in their space. The, mus the Muslim community in support of an orphanage that we are working with in Ghana. Uh, Valerie Wynn and Defermi Recreation Center. Our supporters of the Oakland chapter of Jack and Jill of America. My friends, my colleagues, the students and parents of the St. Mary's Dance Ensemble, and all of the students that have allowed me to be a part of their lives. I would just like to leave you with these few words, especially uh, the young people that are here. It's important to have a passion in life. Fulfill that passion. Feel it. Feel it. Fulfill those dreams. And above all, stand for something. Allow your greatness to shine. Know that God is with you and you have support. If we all share a little food, no one goes hungry. If we all give a little love, no child is left unloved. Thank you so much. From the African American Shakespeare Company in San Francisco, L. Peter Callender. In Shakespeare's sonnet number 19, <clears throat> he confronts Father Time to ask for the continued beauty of his love. Devouring time! Blunt thou the lion's paws and make the earth devour her own sweet brood. Pluck the keen teeth from the fierce tiger's jaws and burn the long-lived phoenix in her blood. Make glad and sorry seasons as thou fleest and do whatever thou wilt, fast-footed time to the wide world and all her passing sweets. But I forbid thee one most heinous crime. O carve not with thine hours my love's fair brow, nor draw no lines there with thine antique pen. Him in thy course untainted do allow for beauty's pattern to succeeding men. <laughs> Yet do thy worst, old time. Despite thy wrongs, my love shall in my verse ever live young. Thank you. Now it's time for our third honoree, and it is my pleasure to uh, welcome to the stage uh, Carolyn Dyson. Carolyn is a cancer survivor, but more than that, she is someone who is dedicated to the community and advocates and urge, urges us in the prevention of cancer through education and community outreach. So join me in viewing her video right now. I'm Reverend Carolyn Dyson program manager for the African American Breast Health Program, as well as the Sister to Sister Breast Health Program. The purpose of the program is to reduce, for African American women, the alarming breast cancer death rate. And we do that by making sure that uninsured women, African American women, who reside in San Francisco have access to no cost screening mammograms. The most important message is that breast cancer won't wait. Uh, it didn't wait for my mother. It won't wait for you to finish school. It won't wait for you to lose the next 10 pounds. Anywhere I can find women who are at risk for breast cancer, I'm there. Can I schedule your mammogram? Yes, you can. Yes. This is a great day. For this community, I'm a trusted messenger, and that makes a difference. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. How many of you know that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength? They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. That passage of scripture is so important to me because I felt like the lady in waiting for six years. And so tonight, uh, this acknowledgement 
says that California Pacific Medical Center did not make a mistake when it made the commitment to start the African American Breast Health Program to reduce the alarming death rate for African American women who are uninsured in San Francisco. This award tonight for me is dedicated to my mother, Dr. Elizabeth Carney, who lost her battle with breast cancer in 1975. And it is also dedicated to my mother's sister, Vernice Stevens, a 45-year breast cancer survivor who made her transition to glory just five days ago. Sincere thanks to the California Pacific Medical Center Foundation, the Susan G. Coleman Foundation, Mrs. Athena Blackburn, and various other donors whose generosity has helped to maintain both the African American Breast Health Program and the Sister to Sister, Bro and the Sister, to Sister Breast Health Program. And to the entire staff of California Pacific Medical Center, in particular to Nadine Radovich, the director of the Breast Health Center on the California campus, and to Mary Katnazaro, the director of the Breast Health Center on the St. Luke's campus. I want to say to you on behalf of every African-American woman that has come through the doors to be screened, Nadine and Mary, I want to thank you personally for receiving our women, our uninsured women, from this vulnerable population and treating them and screening them with dignity and respect. And I want to say especially to my children, to Melanie, Stephanie, and Forrest, and to the other relatives gathered here tonight, I love you for allowing me to take time away from you, time away from family activities, when my heart turned in another direction and focused on the work of CPMC, helping to save the lives of women and to sometimes pull away and just minister hope to someone in need. I want to thank you for giving me that time. To my grandchildren, as African American youth, I want you to know that you can make positive differences and contributions in the world around you. But I want to say most especially, thanks to Mark, Dr. Martin Brodman, the regional president of Sutter East Bay, and to Dr. Stephen Lockhart. These two men have been the wind beneath my wings. I couldn't have done it without them. And I want to say thank you to both of them and CPMC, John Bosque, uh, Denise Fontaine, if I could start calling names, I'll get in trouble. So will you just all stand so I can say thank you? California Pacific Medical Center. Thank you. And Union Bank, thank you again. Well, our final recognition tonight goes to JoLynn Washington. She is an educator who has more than 30 years of experience in the San Francisco Unified School District. Jose Ortiaga Elementary School was where she started her career, and now she is the school's principal. Ms. Washington believes that a good education and encouragement are essential in order for students to achieve academic success. Could you please join me in watching her video? Um, my name is JoLynn Washington, and I am the principal at Jose Ortega Elementary School here in San Francisco. Have a good day. Jose Ortega is a community that provides a safe place for children to come, to learn, to be nurtured. Come, come, team. Kids are young, but they can still make a difference, and it's really important for them to know that. They also learn social skills that allow them to get along with other children. and. They also learn to care, and by learning to care, eventually these children will help the world to become a better place. This path that I'm going down is a path that was meant for me to go down. I really think that this is my vocation and this is my calling, and yet yeah, it's not easy, but when you know that what you're doing is right for children, that all goes away.
I believe that God had a purpose for me. And being a spiritual person, I feel that he made education my calling. In the field of education, so much relies on collaboration to help students to become successful. And tonight, I have an opportunity to thank the people that helped me to do the job that I do. First of all, I want to thank the Jose Ortega parents for being so devoted to their children and having their children ready to come to school every day to learn. That is huge. <laughs> and we appreciate it so much. I want to thank my staff. I also would like to thank my administrative assistant, Jenny Fryer Fong. Thank you to my teachers. Can my teachers please stand up? I do need you to understand that five years ago, I was their colleague. At one point, some of them were my master teachers when I was learning to be a teacher. And so to move into this position as their leader has been wonderful because I respect them so much. They are smart people, and I appreciate everything that you guys do. You're not only my teachers, but you are my friends. And I'm so grateful to have you as part of my life. Um, OK, let me keep it together. <laughs> OK, and you know what? They're nurturing, and they educate children, and they see the best in children. We look at children's assets. We don't look at children as coming to us with deficits. We look at them as having assets, and how do we move them based on what they know. And I appreciate you guys for doing this. I would like to thank Christy Parker, who is my mentor. And she was my principal. To Veronica Chavez. Veronica used to be my colleague, and now she's my, my supervisor. She is the assistant superintendent of San Francisco Schools. Veronica, can you please stand up? <laughs> to my family, to my cousins. My cousins are so respectful, and they give me so much respect as an educator. Mary, I just have to say thank you for always listening to me, and you've done a great job with your children. I want to thank my in-laws, Marva and James Washington, because without them, I couldn't do a lot of things that I've done. I don't think you guys realize how important you've been in my life. I couldn't have gone to school at night. I couldn't hold down a job. I couldn't take care of my children, along with Donald, who was working very hard, without you guys taking the kids to school, picking them up watching them for us, and I really appreciate everything that you've done for me and my family, and thank you very much, Marva and Jim. To my in-laws, my brother-in-laws, and my sister-in-laws, thank you for always being there for us. To my siblings, Edine, Cynthia, Michelle, Sandra, and Eddie. I love you guys so much. Thank you for always making me feel so special when I'm Joe Lynn or Mrs. Washington. <laughs> you guys know about that. So thank you. And you know what? If dad was here, he'd be looking down saying, good job, girl. Keep it up. And I will. To my mom, Mary and Lewis. Mom, please stand up. <laughs> to my children, Dexter and Jasmine. I'm very proud of both of you. And I look forward to seeing both of you aspire in the field of education. My husband, Donald, is my rock. Thank you for the love that you give me every day. I love you very much. And finally, I would like to thank the students of Jose Ortega Elementary School. You are why I do this work. And I feel that all of you will take a position in this world to make it a better place. Again. Thank you all for this fantastic honor, and I will cherish it forever. Thank you. Please welcome Lawrence Beeman as he performs Old Man River. There's an old man called the Mississippi. That's the old man that I like to be 
what does he care if the world's got troubles? What does he care if the land is free? Something, but don't say nothing. He just keeps rolling, he keeps on rolling alone. He don't plant taters, he don't plant cotton, but them that plant them is soon for. on rolling alone You and me we sweat and strain body hole aching and rack with pain told that barge lift that bail you get a little drunk and you lands in jail Scared of 